Lesson 5.5, Model Dividing a Decimal by a Decimal. We can use a model to divide a decimal by a decimal. We can shade decimal models to represent the dividend. Here we have 6 tenths, so we shade in 6 tenths. Then we can cut the model apart into groups that are each the size of the divisor. The divisor is 2 tenths. We have one group that's 2 tenths, another 2 tenths, and another 2 tenths. The number of same sized groups is the quotient. We have three groups, it's equal to three. We have three groups containing 2 tenths. To use decimal models, for each whole number we shade 100 unit squares. A tenth would be 10 units, or one column of 10 and a hundredth would be one little square. And using a paper model, we can cut it apart into equal groups, or we could draw lines to make equal groups to separate them. If the divisor is the amount of groups, the quotient will be how many in each group. And if the divisor is how many in each group, the quotient will be the amount of groups. Here we've got the divisor is how many groups, there'll be two tenths in each group. If the divisor is how many in each group, then the quotient will be how many groups. Here's how we model to divide by tenths. We're dividing by four tenths, so we're dividing by tenths. This is eight tenths divided by four tenths. We shade in eight tenths, that's eight columns, and we make groups that have four tenths in them we make two groups, our quotient is 2. Here we have 1 and 6 tenths. We need to divide it into 8 tenths. We make a line to separate 8 tenths. And here we have another 8 tenths. This is one whole. We divide it into a group that has 8 tenths in it and we can move this part of the whole over to this side to make another 8 tenths. We have two groups. So 1 and 6 tenths divided by 8 tenths is equal to 2. To model to divide by hundredths, we have a model that has 100 squares. We have to do 86 hundredths divided by 43 hundredths. We're going to shade 86 hundredths, that's 8 columns and six separate ones. And we're going to count so there are 43. We can draw a line or cut it to separate it. Count another 43 and we see we made two groups. It's equal to 2. Now we have 2 and 25 hundredths divided by 45 hundredths. We're going to use a few models. So if you look, we have this is one whole this is one whole, and then we had to use this one. We count out groups of 45 squares because each square is a hundredth, and we find we have one, two, three, four, five of them. That's five groups. It's equal to five. We have one and sixteen hundredth divided by fifty-eight hundredths. We have one full one and 16 separate little squares for 1 and 16 hundredths. We count off 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, and 8 separate ones for 58 hundredths. We can draw a line or cut it to separate it. We count out another 58, and we see that we have two groups. It's equal to 2. So remember, each column is 1 tenth, so we'll know 5 columns will be 5 tenths. Then we can just add 8 little separate ones for the 8 hundredths. Now we have 48 hundredths divided by 16 hundredths. So each small square equals 1 hundredth. So we shade 48 of them. We count off 16 squares and draw a line to separate them. So here is 16 hundredths. We count another 16. Now we have 2, and 
we count what's remaining. We have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16. We have three groups of 16 hundredths. We know it's equal to 3. Here we have 1 and 92 hundredths divided by 32 hundredths. We shade 192 squares for 192 hundredths. We count groups of 32 squares and separate them with lines. That's one group of 32 hundredths. That's two groups. We can count another. That's another one. That's another group of 32 hundredths. We do it again. And we count the remaining squares to see if we have 32 hundredths. We do, and we count one, two, three, four, five, six groups of 32 hundredths. It's equal to six. Here we have three and six tenths, and it's divided by some number n, which will be how many are in each group, and it's telling us that there's four groups. We can solve this by thinking of a basic fact. 4 times 9 is equal to 36. 4 times 9 tenths is equal to 3 and 6 tenths. There must be one decimal hop in the factor to have one decimal hop in the product. So in order for this to be 3 and 6 tenths, this must be 9 tenths. So 3 and 6 tenths divided by 9 tenths is equal to 4. We know that n is equal to 9 tenths. Sophia bought 2 and 25 hundredths yards of fabric to make decorative pillows. She will use 75 hundredths yard to make each pillow. How many pillows can she make? We have 2 whole units for 2 whole. And then we have two columns for the two tenths and five separate ones for the five hundredths. We need to make groups of 75. Each square is one hundredth. This is 75 hundredths, so we need 75 squares in each group. That's one. We'll count another 75. Our second group of 75 is overlapping into the next square. And we count to see if we have 75 here. We do, and we have one, two, three groups of 75 hundredths. It's equal to three. Sophia has 68 hundredths meter of green ribbon that she wants to cut into 17 hundredths meter long pieces. And she has 78 hundredths meter of yellow ribbon that she wants to cut into 13 hundredths meter long pieces. How many more pieces of yellow ribbon will she have than green ribbon? So we need to divide 68 hundredths by 17 hundredths. We shade in 68 little squares. We count groups of 17 for 17 hundredths and see that we have four groups. That means she's going to have four ribbons. For this one, we shade in 78 little squares for 78 hundredths. We make groups of 13 squares as 13 hundredths. We can make six groups, that's six ribbons. We need to know how many more yellow ribbons she'll have than green ribbons. We do six minus four, which is two more. So we know Sophia will have two more pieces of yellow ribbon than green ribbon. We needed to divide, then we needed to divide again for this one, then we needed to subtract to know the difference. So make sure when you have a decimal, if it says 43 hundredths, you count out 43 little squares. If it says 45 hundredths, you count out 45 little squares. In our next lesson, 5.6, we're going to learn how to place the decimal point in the quotient when we divide a decimal by a decimal. I hope you enjoy the rest of your day, and I hope I see you next time. Bye!